Well, good morning, everyone. Today is going to be a double upload, maybe possibly a triple, although I certainly hope not. But there is a metric ton of information to cover from over the weekend and early this morning. Everything from Nike getting woke and going broke, uh, the Witcher television series news, as well as some drama around Dragon Quest Eleven. I want to start with the Witcher TV series. Now, it dropped this morning that Henry Cavill will actually be leading the show, which is good news. Good actor, in my opinion, probably um, going to be solid. Although, I was exposed by uh, one angry gamer uh, that uh, the writing staff chose to get woke. Uh, interestingly enough, this tweet is a little bit old, actually. But I don't think many people noticed it until um, at least one angry gamer, gamer didn't uh, or until they exposed it. We have Lauren from the writing team saying, The Witcher writers stand with our fellow writers' rooms again, united against xenophobia, racism, uh, and racism. Please join us in supporting races which provide legal aid to immigrant families. Hashtag one vidya at a time. Hashtag reunite the families. And what we have here is a group of people that looks like they showed up at Starbucks and was told that PSLs were out of stock. I, I mentioned this the other night. This woman here looks like she... Uh, is behind you in your che in the checkout lane and she's pissed off that you're using plastic bags and not reusable uh, bags. This guy, this guy is really upset that that hot new vinyl he bought from an obscure Belgium band, uh, it, you don't care about it. And so he knows that you're not actually hip. Um, and, and this guy, well, this guy looks, well, I don't want to say it, but I think we all know. This guy, I think, is probably their Uber driver. Uh, they made him sit in that chair, hold this thing up. But nonetheless, uh, we have seeking asylum is not illegal, but there are proper channels to go through. You don't cross the border and poof, it's granted. Looks like the very first response with the most amount of favorites disavows. Again, nothing wrong with holding this opinion and having and being an activist, where I disavow is when you use the platform that you were given, in this case, The Witcher, to then push political ideology. Next up, we have uh, some backlash on the criticism that IGN put out for Dragon Quest Eleven, which drops today. Uh, I've only played two of the Dragon Quest games, and I didn't finish either one of them. But they were both really awesome. I have a really bad habit of buying a game that I know is going to take 50 to 100 hours to complete and then never finishing it. But Dragon Quest, you could argue, is one of the best, uh, most beloved JRPG series running, um, given the fact that we are now on number 11. Now, IGN reviewed the game and gave it, I would say, a pretty decent overall score. But the entire review was uh, sullied by their focus on a couple of things. One being Dragon Quest's long tradition of Puff Puff, a pseudo-sexual metaphor coined by Dragon Ball creator Akiri Toriyama, also returns in Dragon Quest XI. Games have long included semi-lewd Puff Puff references as a sort of Easter egg, and echoes of an elusive age leans too heavily on that tradition. Again, these are small Easter eggs, little side quests, right? At times it's played for laughs. A cliffside puff puff turns out to just be some bungee jumping and another proves to be more than innocent makeup application. But one optional encounter, again, optional, uh, really puts me off. I was invited into a girl's dim bedroom where I received a puff puff in a dim room. And when the lights came back on, her father was standing there. She revealed that he delivered the puff puff in the dark. 
The consent implications troubled me. I did not find this funny. Uh, it, it's it's absolutely in a, in, a, in a review that's maybe a thousand words, right? It it completely spends its time uh, focusing on a tiny tiny part of the game. They also go on to say. Dragon Quest XI exceeds when it emphasizes fighting bad guys, exploring dungeons, and finding treasure. It's a visual feast populated by a cast of colorful monsters, engrossing, uh, more engrossing than its main characters, uneven story beats, and some icky bits at times. Uh, slow Dragon Quest down, but the superb mechanics remain the focus. I mean, uh, overall, right? They clearly love the game, but they couldn't help. It's almost like an actual fan of the game. Uh, wrote the review and then like no 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 you've got to you've got to inject some identity politics you've got to inject some social justice this review can't stand as it's as is and of course fans of JRPGs pushed back some of the comments uh, on the re on the review are are pretty hilarious a live check in of the uh, up of the voting system right now shows two point six thousand votes down on the video to 2.7 votes up now this is at 2.7 thousand so about 50 50 up votes to down votes but you gotta remember this is a review of a game that they gave a very high score uh now the top comment on the video of course review was going all right till you decided to say you like to speed through dialogue in an rpg then cry about sexualization. That was cringeworthy. Um, even Angry Joe. Even Angry Joe. Is this guy being serious about the optional bunny outfits? How is that over-sexualization? I don't think that means what you think it means. Next top comment. Keep Western politics out of my Japanese game reviews, please. Downvoted. Next comment. I don't think I've rolled my eyes harder than when you brought up these sexualization complaints. I mean, IGN, 8.8 .8 out of 10. The Puff Puff Girl was too icky for me. Well, I'm looking forward to Dragon Quest XI, and if I get time, I really hope to play it. I don't know. Are you looking for? Are you going to pick it up today? Are you looking forward to it? I'm interested to find out. Then, on to our main topic. Uh, yesterday, Nike rolled out uh, their optional jump into the culture war. Now, they didn't have to do this. They made a conscious decision to uh, uh, inject some uh, controversy, which, again, I am a firm believer that it's very difficult for uh, you to disprove the um, there's no bad press. But Nike is working to prove me wrong. They rolled out a hilarious ad uh, featuring Colin Kaepernick saying, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Um, I'm not exactly sure what Colin Kaepernick uh, sacrificed, to be honest with you. Uh, it's, it's pretty curious to me that anybody would buy this narrative anymore. Uh, if I can, if I can share some actual information now, if you're not familiar, Colin Kaepernick was not the only one, but was kind of the centerpiece of the whole kneeling controversy, which crushed the NFL ratings last season. Make no mistake about it. People didn't want to see that shit. Now, I don't care which side you're on about whether or not it's disrespectful. I've had Marines tell me that they don't believe it is. And hey, if Marines aren't offended by it, it's hard for me to be offended by it. Although my personal opinion is it's disrespectful. It's a look at me moment when everybody's supposed to be singing the national anthem. I mean, it's a self, just like most activism, it's a me first move. Instead of getting out there and being the change you want, making the change you want to see, you instead take a moment to tell everyone to look at you. Now, you could argue that, hey, it starts the conversation. This is maybe a good thing. It's hard for me to disprove that. I'm just sharing my opinion. So, of course, Colin Kaepernick, the always the narrative is that, well, once he started kneeling, uh, then 
Well, then he got ran out of the league, which is patently false. Okay. This man took the 49ers to the Super Bowl. All right. To, and after that, he lost his job to a quarterback that had a career record of 5 and 22 after being benched several times in 20 in the 2016 season he was benched for a far worse quarterback this is long before any of the kneeling controversy ever started. In just three years, he went from taking the team to the Super Bowl to having complete game stats of like eight yards, completely regressing. And there were trade rumors and all sorts of things. It divided the locker room because people were loyal to him, but he was so bad that they finally had to bench him. All of this, you can research for yourself, was long before he ever kneeled. So then after he started kneeling, he used that to say, well, this is why NFL teams won't give me a job. No, Colin Kaepernick, you played yourself out of a job. You got benched for a 5-22 and career starter. You had some of the absolute worst games I've ever seen a quarterback have after getting rewarded with a long-term high money contract that you earned taking your team to the Super Bowl is no small task. But you got to remember that people seem to forget that after that Super Bowl appearance, Colin Kaepernick completely imploded. Now, who's to blame for that? Well, there's some scheme in it. There's some coaching in it. And of course, there's personal responsibility. Colin Kaepernick did not sacrifice one damn thing. He played himself out of a job. But the far left media likes to say, well, because he has an afro and he kneels during the anthem, that he is being blacklisted by the NFL. He continues to try and sue the NFL. I expect him to lose resoundingly. You have to remember that people in the NFL, they keep some of the absolute worst human beings in the league. Okay? wife abusers, people who are involved in violence like Pac-Man Jones. You could say the Greg Williams bounty gate. You could say Ray Lewis's involvement with in a situation where somebody ended up dead. Uh, there is a long list of domestic abusers that don't get pushed out of the league. Greg, uh, I forget his name in Dallas. I mean, you could look at LT smoking crack. Everyone knew he smoked crack, but they kept him in the league. You could look at the nineties Cowboys where people like crack pipes on the sideline. I mean, you got to understand that this narrative is just 100% false. He did not sacrifice one thing and Nike chose to put him you know, you could have put, if you wanted to take an NFL player and say, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything, how about Pat Tillman, a NFL player, a Marine who gave up his time in the NFL to go serve and was killed there? How about that? Not Colin Kaepernick, who is one of the biggest phonies in uh, activism history. He's right up there with Asia Argento. I mean, the, the, and of course he's not getting, yeah, here we go. Here's Pat Tillman. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Uh, this is what sacrificing everything looks like. The guy is not a hero. Uh, and, you know, oh, by the way, right. This, this, by the way, this guy still got paid out for his NFL contract and he's now getting paid to be in some ad campaign. So let me know what you're sacrificing, Colin Kaepernick, and I'll happily amend my video. And oh, by the way, Nike shares falls after Colin Kaepernick ad deal. Nike shares fall as backlash erupts over new ad campaign featuring Colin Kaepernick. Nike shares are falling Tuesday morning after a company revealed a new ad featuring Colin Kaepernick. The news of Kaepernick, who in 2016 decided not to stand for national anthem to protest racial injustice, became the face of Nike. Uh, marketing sparked some backlash. Nike boycott was trending on Twitter. And shares were down more than 2% in early trading. And by the way, you have to know that 2 to 3%, it's down 3% now. 
that is representing hundreds of millions of dollars. It's not just like, oh, it's 3%. No, no, no. You're talking about serious money. It continues to drop at 1220 when I'm shooting this video. And, you know, I don't, I don't need to tell you that featuring the woke slide that we see going on, I expect it to continue. And I expect it to continue into the fall when there is a very real impact in sales. Now, I'm not a huge boycott, burn my Nike socks and, and kind of thing. But, you know, there's a lot of options to buy overpriced socks and overpriced shirts. Uh, and maybe you want to give your money to a company that doesn't willingly insert themselves into controversy, right? Nike could have just kept making shoes. No, this is a pandering. This is calculated. They knew there would be this outrage. What they probably didn't count on is uh, experiencing the fun woke slide, which I enjoy to see happening to companies that willingly do this kind of stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.